In this video, I'm going to be explaining the role of the DHCP relay agent and also explain the DHCP messages that come with it. Here is our topology. I already have the basic configs already set, IP addresses to an interface, and the DHCP server right here has reachability to this network, but I haven't actually configured the DHCP pool and the forwarding address on R2. So let's get into it, let's configure it together. So let's go into R2. And when you're configuring a DHCP relay agent, you have to go into the interface on which it wants to forward DHCP requests. So the uh, the command, sorry, the command, you go into the interface, so interface F00, because this interface right here will be receiving these DHCP discover broadcast messages and it needs to forward that broadcast message over to the DHCP server. So an interface F00, and we're going to do IP helper address, and then the address of the DHCP server, which is 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 .1. And that is it for the DHCP relay agent. Now let's configure the DHCP server. All right, go on the global config mode, and it's going to be IP DHCP, and then the pool, and then the name, which we'll just name clients. All right, then. What is the network or the subnet that we're going to hand out IP addresses? It's going to be 192.168.1.0 with a slash 24. And here we could also set up some default router settings like the default gateway for our client and also like some DNS servers. So the default router, we're going to say, you know what, just send to R2's interface F00. So 192.168. One. And then we can also put in a DNS server, and I think this is Google, so we'll just uh, put that in there. And uh, that should, nope, not yet. We could also set some excluded IP addresses, just so we want to have some reserved IP addresses. So we'll do IP DHCP excluded address, and we want to exclude, let's say, the first. 10 addresses of this 192.168 network. 1.10. Cool. That should be it. Now, how do we actually see these messages? Well, we're going to start up Wireshark. So, we're going to right click on this link, start capture, and we'll go on R2's F10 port. Or R2's, yeah, F10 port. Click OK. Wireshark will start. And all right, leave that there. Let's go back. Now let's start R1 to get an IP address. 50, no IP routing. Make sure to turn that off. Go to interface F00. Make sure it's not shut down. And then all we do is we do IP address. DHCP. Hit enter. Let's go back to Wireshark. Let's see if we get these DHCP messages. We got to discover. We got to offer, request, and acknowledgement. Cool, that's what we're looking for. So let's stop that. All right. So here, let's look at the DHCP discover message. Notice that it came from 192.168.1.1 and a 10.10.10.1. So the client sent out a broadcast message to, to R2's F00 interface and he saw that it was a DHCP discover address so he sent it over to the DHCP server and that was a unicast message. Clearly you can see the source and destination and if we bring it up we get to see the actual MAC address of it. So the source MAC was right there, 100010, which means it was sourcing it from this address because it's a layer two link, so it has to be on this side. But it was using 
the F00 IP address. All right, that's good. And it was destined to 0C0010, which was the DHCP server. Now, what was in it, let's see if I could shrink this down so we could see more of it. Ugh. All right, um, here you could see the port numbers that it was on. It, port 67 and 67, which is the server side of of DHCP but what we actually want to look at is in this bootstrap protocol the discover protocol can I move this up nope alright so if we scroll down we get to see some messages here um, here you could clearly see the relay agent IP address move that down nope. and then also the client MAC address that's important. That's uh, 98000, which is our ones or our client's MAC address right there. All right. And it's requesting. Here you could see what it's actually requesting the parameter request list. You open that up, and why does it want to scroll down? Am I running out of room? There. Here it's requesting the subnet mask, uh, domain name, server, domain name, things like that. So that was all in the discover message. Now let's go into the next message, which is the DHCP offer, which was sent by, here you could see the IPv4 address 10.10.10.1, which is our server destined to the relay agent. And here's the source port numbers. You can look at the MAC address again. It'll match. But here we want to look at what did the DHCP offer us. So here is the type of DHCP message. It is an offer. And why don't you want to... All right, I don't know what happened, but uh, now I can scroll down. So here in the offer message, you get to see here is your client IP address. So this is what R1's IP address, that's what the DHCP is offering. Here you can clearly see the relay agent IP address. Um, there's the client MAC address again. And then we go to uh, the parameters that the DHCP server set. So here you can see the lease time of one day. Here's the renewal time, 12 hours and then the subnet mask, what the default router IP address is going to be, and the DNS server that I set. So that was sent from the DHCP server to the relay agent, that's the DHCP offer. The DHCP request was sent from the relay agent's IP address, and it's basically saying, yes, I accept all of that information that you sent in the DHCP offer, and the, the source and destination IP addresses they are going to be the same as the DHCP discover and all that information in there is pretty much going to look like uh, what the DHCP discover address was so here you can see the relay uh, the relay agent IP address again the client MAC address of R1 and the parameter list it's asking for all this stuff again and then we go to the DHCP acknowledgement which was sent from the server to the relay agent again and in here it's just a confirmation again that acknowledgement is saying yes you're allowed to use this address here you go in the the R1 the client router or client host is going to be using this address 192.168.1.11 and all the parameters that came with it so if we actually go to R1 we see that it was assigned an IP address and this was 192.168.1.11 which we saw in that packet capture behind us. So with that being said, that I hope this gives you a better explanation of how a DHCP relay server works and the messages and the IP addresses and MAC addresses that are involved. I hope this was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.